just stomp you out huh. Came with all my goons, we gon' thug it out Go hit bust and move, we gon' stomp you out What's up, Fight Fam, and welcome to Boxing Bros. We were just hit with some crazy news. Complex sent it to the phone, so we had to discuss it. I'm Caden, and I'm here with my co-host and boxing cousin. I'll let them introduce themselves. What's going on, everybody? This is Trail Down the Bill. This is G. Complex Gent, the one and only. The one and only I'm ready, Complex. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already smiling. I'm like, mm. Complex is here. Mm. You may have figured we're going to dive into one of uh, Complex favorite topics. Deontay Wilder. This is an article by Boxing Scene. And in the article, I'll try to run through it quickly, uh, by Dan Ra Dan Raphael. If you guys know Dan Raphael, he used to uh, work for ESPN. He wrote, Mark Brillen, who has served as Deontay Wilder's co-trainer for his entire 12-year professional career, will no longer be a part of his team as Wilder prepares for a third fight against heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. That was a decision that was made. Shelly Finkel, Wilder's co-manager told Boxing Scene on Friday. After his next fight, it will be determined if the right decision was made or not. Finkel, who managed Breland, who managed Breland during his professional career, brought Breland into Wilder's camp when Wilder turned pro, believing he would help him perfect his jab and bring a wealth of experience. Co-trainer, co-manager, JDs, who has trained Wilder since he was an amateur, who claimed the bronze medal in the 2008 Olympics, remains in the corner and will get Wilder ready for the, ready for the third go-round with Fury, Finkel said. Fury and Wilder fought to a disputed draw in their first fight in December 2018, despite Wilder scoring a pair of knockdowns. However, Fury dominated the rematch on February 22nd at the MGM Grand. Fury, 32 of England, Wilder, 34 of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, down in the third round with a right hand to the head with a body shot in the fifth round en route to dominating the seventh round stoppage as he retained a lineal title and took Wilder's WBC crown. The fight ended when Brillin threw in the towel as Fury was pounding Wilder. These was critical of Brillin's decision uh, during the post-fight news conference. Mark threw the towel. I didn't think he should have, D said at the time. Deontay is the kind of guy that goes out on his shield. He will tell you straight up, don't throw in the towel. Wilder was extremely upset that Brillant threw in the towel for Mark to do it. I was very heartbroken, Wilder said, soon after the rematch. If I say statements like that, I want to kill a man in the ring, then I have to abide by those same principles in the ring of him doing the same thing to me. I'd rather die than go out with someone throwing in the towel. Brillin knows these things. It's been premeditated. I've said this for many years. I've told all my trainers, no matter how it may look outside, no matter how you may love me or have that emotional feeling, don't make an emotional decision and don't ever throw that towel in because my pride is everything. I understand what it looks like, but when you have power like me, I am never out of a fight. No matter what the circumstances, I've never been out of a fight. Initially, Wilder said he would spend some time thinking about whether he wanted to have Brillin, an Olympic gold medalist and former two-time world champion as a professional before beginning to train fighters, remain in his corner. After a few days later, on February 28th, Wilder said he would keep Brillin on his team. I'm a warrior. I feel the same way I felt uh, on the night of the fight. If I have to go out, I want to go out on my shield, Wilder said, announcing his decision. But I understand that my corner and my team has my best interest at heart. Brillin is still a part of my team, uh, part of Team Wilder, and our team looks forward to preparing for the trilogy. Now Wilder has changed his mind as he gets ready for their third fight, which is tentatively supposed to take place December at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas in the main event of a joint pay-per-view between ESPN, Fury's broadcaster, and Fox, which televised Wilder's fights. And so, basically, you you heard everything. There was so much in there, I had to read the whole article. Trill Dollar Bill, what's your thoughts on what you heard? I thought y'all was going to tell me he got rid of JD. I was about to lose my mind, like, woo, he's making ball smooths. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? 
He's making boss moves. Then I hear about him getting rid of the, the two-time uh, Walter Wade champion. Not to mention the 1984, was it? Olympic gold medalist. And if you want to go, <laughs> pardon me? I said it was in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. And what else? What else is it? What else is it? Uh, what? Also, he was like the five five time Golden Gloves champion. You know what I'm saying? In New York City, right? So basically, all I'm saying is you get rid of the guy that can help you with your skills. And you keep the guy. It's just a case of one of those you want a yes man in your corner. That's what I think it is. You want a yes man in your corner. Um, JD's just there to tell him what he wants to hear. And when people get to a certain level, they start to want to keep those type of people around and that could be dangerous. Sometimes people are put in place to protect. I understand Wilder's pride. I understand his warriors. I respect it actually. I respect it. But then there's a point where you got to be smart, right? I wouldn't want to see Wilder get killed in the ring. Even though this was the guy who said he wanted to catch a body, I wouldn't have wanted to see him catch a body. You want to see him get, get body? <laughs> yes. I wouldn't want to see him get body. And there's be people in place to protect you. This is me being the commissioner. This is people. <laughs> <laughs> he comes. Oh God. <laughs> this is people in place to be you you're 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 scorning or you're you're reprimanding and you're firing a person who is there to protect you from yourself. We know you prideful, we know you're a warrior. We seen that in the fight. You didn't go down, we seen that. But still, you was getting beat up and it was looking bad, you was taking some shots. You and yourself is just bleeding out your ear and all that. That's not a good thing. There's people put in place, Mark Brillen, he put his whole career on the line to save your life. He knew how you felt. He knew that this could end his career. But he felt that you being around to spend time with all them children you got, all them babies you got, he felt that that was more important. And you gonna fire that man for that? And you gonna keep the guy around that tells you you don't need to do nothing but throw the right hand? Throw the right hand! I don't know, man. I, I can't say. You just... What are you gonna do now? Like, what are you... Right hand. <laughs> What are you gonna do now? Nobody over there. It, who? Who's gonna? Malik Scott? Like who? What are you gonna do? He's not in the camp anymore. And Malik said that, oh, you know, he's not in the camp because uh, when he was talking about like the snakes and things, Malik insinuated that it's possible they think he did something to his water. Really? I didn't know that. So yeah. Malik Scott's not working with Wilder anymore. Yo, this is crazy. Oh, so I didn't know that. Had, he got JD over there kicking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean Malik? So, I was the only one who had your back from the start. So, so is Malik focusing on OnlyFans full time now? I guess. I guess. <laughs> yeah, just filming, so. oh, just filming content. Yeah, he, he he's, he's he's no longer the sidekick. So this is this is. I thought that he'll be back there with Mark, and they'll get him back into the Mark teaching him the boxing. You know what I'm saying? Teaching him the tricks, and he's learned. And that's why I thought he brought Mark back. And then you let him go. All right. Well, that's Trill's take. And now we're going to go to resident Wilder fan G. What are your thoughts on the article and all the information? What are you going to do now? Well, first, first, let me say this. I'm happy Malik Scott is gone. I do believe <laughs> from Jim Plant. You know what I mean? You got to get up out of there. It is what it is. But um, in regards to this article, though, <clears throat> I do question the entire article. I, I have to be honest. Like, um, I felt like what Dan Raphael has done was 
he covered the issue like well detailed until the current situation. The last paragraph just says something as simple as uh, now Wilder has changed his mind as he gets ready for the third fight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, why did he change his mind? You know what I mean? And so I have a different take than what Trill is um, alluding to. This is what I'm thinking. Maybe Breland didn't want Wilder to take the, 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 the trilogy. Maybe he didn't want him to take the fight. <clears throat> and Maybe Wilder was trying to get Breland on board, but Breland was probably like what you were saying, Trill. Like, yo, listen, man, I got nothing but love for you, but I can't let you go out there and get murdered. You know what I mean? So that could be the situation where Wilder's like, hey, man, listen, yo, my belt's on the line, my pride's on the line. Like, I got I to gotta get this back. I got to get my belt back. If I got to die in the ring, then I'm going to die. And <clears throat> Mark's probably like, then, then bro, God bless, you know? And so maybe they had to part ways because of that. But that's why I, I don't really like how the article is written because it doesn't really provide context on why Wilder parted ways with Breland this go around. It's, it focused on <clears throat> the initial issue, but it's not, it didn't really go into detail why Wilder just all of a, out of a sudden, like, just switched up again, you know? And so I like to believe that maybe Breland just didn't want to be a part of this fight. All right. I mean, so you think that Breland would have, like, the audacity in the guts to say to Wilder, I don't think you should fight Fury for a third time. I mean, he had the audacity in the guts of throwing a towel, and Wilder said, yo, you better not throw in a towel. <laughs> well, he, almost, he almost lost his job because of that, too. So his job <laughs> changed. Well, he did lose his job. Now. Hey, man, listen, it, 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 yo, I like to imagine they've been together for so many years now, right, that you build a real bond where it's almost like family. You're in training camp for months on end. You're seeing these dudes for, like, hours on a day. Like, after a while, you really with their family. Bond. Yeah, it's more than just a business transaction. You're looking at this young man like, oh, you know what? I, I could see myself or I see my son in Wilder. You know, he's probably thinking all kind of stuff. So when that situation happened, when he had to throw in the towel, he had to really dig deep and reflect. Like, I know he doesn't want me to throw in this towel. I, I can't look at his wife in the eyes. I can't look at his kids in the eye and be like, exactly. yeah, yo. I'll, you know what I mean? Who wants to be Rocky, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, when, 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 when Apollo got murdered, who wants to be Rocky? Looking stupid with his Hugo Boss shirt in the towel. And he could have threw it. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> a stupid promise to a fighter that doesn't even know how to protect himself. And then now we got we got we got Creed uh series. You know what I'm saying? This young brother could have been an accountant, but he's a boxer because his daddy wanted to be stupid in the ring. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's time to unleash the man, the president of the Wilder Fan Club. He defended Wilder as his attorney against the boxing bros. He brought flowers when Tyson Fury spanked Deontay Wilder in the rematch. And now he's going to give his opinion mm -hmm. on Deontay Wilder parting ways with Mark Brillen. None other than the boxing cousin complex. Um, this shocked me. I saw this and I immediately sent it to you guys because I thought this was massive, massive news. Um, one thing stuck out to me, which I don't think we've all talked about yet, is the quote by Shelly Finkel, where Shelly said that was the decision that was that was the decision that was made. After his next fight, it will be determined if the right decision was made or not. Meaning, Shelly wasn't on board with this. Shelly's like, that's the wildest decision, or that's their team's decision. However he performs in the next fight will tell us if that was the right decision or not. And that's kind of how I feel. I, I'm actually not mad at Breland leaving. That's, that's actually not what shocked me or bothers me. I think Brillen's good trainer, but I think Brillen's taken him as, probably as far as he can go. They've been together 12 years. He got him to be a world champion, a five-year reigning world champion. That's pretty good. And trainers leave. Things happen. Mo relationships move. For Miguel Cotter had like six trainers in his lifetime. I mean, hey, it happens. What bothers me is JD's being the main trainer. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> That's a problem. <laughs> and honestly, honestly, that worries me. If 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 they go into the fight with JD's being the head trainer, I cannot co-sign that. I can't. Wait, I just, hold on. This is huge. No, this is huge. This is huge. This is huge. <laughs> You're telling Bro, me huge. if Deontay Wilder goes in with JD's as the main trainer. You, you're not boxing. Boxing is a team sport. 
there's one guy in there, but you, that guy's not just himself. You have a trainer, you have a cut man, you have a strength and conditioning coach. All that creates the fighter. The fighter is the tool, the end product of a training camp of mm. different minds going in to perform, right? It's not just him. You need the best that you can have around you as a team. If you just go in there and you don't have the best, JD's no shade to him. I mean, but I don't think he's a boxing mind that can handle a Fury. Like, let's be real. This isn't like a fluke win or whatever. Fury's a tough fighter. Fury's probably the best heavyweight in the world right now that you can make a very good argument. He's probably the best maybe of the last decade. I mean, he's a tough fighter. So to go in there, right, against him, you need to be prepared by the best that you can get. These ain't it. These these helped him, sure. You from, know what people say about these, right? You know what immediately <laughs> follows when people say these, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the, look, JD's is if they if JD's is the head trainer, then I I'm still root for Wilder, but I just don't see it happening. For me, I think Wilder needs a new trainer. If if Breland goes, fine, but get somebody in there who's competent to be your head trainer, who will lead the who will lead your training camp, somebody who knows what he's doing. I think of three names, right, that came to mind just in the last few minutes. One, Jonathan Banks. He coached Klitschko. He helped. He's a he's a under understudy of Emmanuel of Emmanuel um, Stewart, and he's a former heavyweight boxer himself. Not as successful, but probably a better trainer than boxer. Um, Joe Goosen. Joe Goosen is a great trainer. He's been a good trainer for years. He trained F.A. He's training F.A., bro. I'm sorry now. What happened? Okay. He's training F.A. a job, bro. So, Didn't he just take uh, – but he just started training F.A., right? I don't know. Yeah, he needed, All I know is – F.A. was training with – F.A. was training with those dude. dope shirts he'd be wearing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So Goosen's F- more concerned about being a car mentor. Then it being a trainer showing up with like flowery shirts and Hawaiian shirts. Okay. <laughs> F.A. Drogba was training with um, <laughs> what's his name down in Houston? He was training um, I forget his name, but he left him and I think went to Goosen. But oh, Goosen I'm talking about uh, Goosen cutting Foster. him was he was he no he wasn't one cutting him was he? Who's the dude who trained um, uh, Kovalev? Uh, he was training Kovalev last time. What's his name? Um, oh, Jack. Buddy McGirt. Was he? He was training with Buddy McGirt, I believe. Listen. Buddy, I, was. Buddy was a good – anybody you see, if Buddy McGurk is in the court, put sense. money on the other fighter. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Why right fight now, him. if Buddy but, McGurk is in that corner, put your money on the other fighter. So, I was saying Jonathan Banks, <laughs> Joe <laughs> Goosen. I like him as a person. He's the, he's the best. He will not let his fighters get beat. He'll throw in the towel. He will throw the towel in. He will throw – yeah. He this is on me. This is my call. He done said that so many he's times. Exactly. Like, that's my point. That's what he's known for. His father get beat up so bad, he's willing to stop it. Listen, oh, you see Buddy McGurk in that corner, you go for the other fighter. All right, go. <laughs> and then the last name I was thinking of was Floyd Mayweather Sr. Um, I think I he... You. I'm playing. I'm messing with you. I'm playing. No, I think Sr. Senior is actually one of probably the better coaches of this generation. I don't think he gets enough credit. I mean, um, but anyways... There's, there's those three good names and then numbers of others probably who could be good in that position. If Wilder has JDs, I just don't think he's going to give them the training necessary to take on a Fury because Fury is going to be the toughest challenge. Fury is it. After that, everybody else is just underneath that. So for me, that's what worried me when I saw it. I mean, I rock with Wilder, but I'm not as much of a fanboy that I'm going to sign off on anything and everything he does. When you do wrong, I got to call it out. And this one, I just don't think, like, Breland, okay, fine. And maybe the relationship is strained and things happen, right? You, like you guys said, you know, they've been together a long time. And I think Breland, honestly, couldn't probably show much more. He's, he's, if you've been together 12 years, how, what, more can, what, what else is there, right? What it is, though, is JD's. And I think he's so loyal, Wilder, to JD's because JD's, like, found him. He's like his, um, who's the dude who found Muhammad Ali when he was, like, 14 or something? You know what I mean? Um, that same Remember Angelo Dundee didn't find him. He trained. And no, he did it. It was a, there was like a, a, a cop in Louisville when yeah, it was he a first walked. Officer. Yeah, it, when he first walked he into a gym. Stolen. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. We all know the story. So I think that's who like JD's is to Wild. He's like the first. He walked into his gym and then JD's just hit gold. Like oh my god, he found one of the best freaking physical talents 
and his, you know what I mean? So JD's is lucky. JD's isn't there because he's like a boxing genius. So um, how are you comparing that to Muhammad though? Because Muhammad Ali didn't let that dude train him. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> he was never oh, Muhammad Ali. That, that, that's him. <laughs> well, that was my point. Is, yeah. is that Wilder <laughs> did Wilder? That was like that's why Wilder did stay with him. Well, in fact, really, I think JD's is like his co-manager and co-trainer. Like he just keeps him there. Double dip. Like no, yeah, JD's so triple dipping. He's triple yeah. dipping. Yeah. He got three jobs. JD's is the cut man. The co-manager and the co-trainer. Yeah, yeah you didn't three. see how JD's was the one who was his cut man in the fight with um Tyson Fury. I thought he was just trying to stop the air from. Yo, bro, that's what a cut man does. I mean, yeah, JD, but you know, JD was like, like, man, you know. Well, Mark Breland. So I think in the corner, Mark Breland is the head coach. Mark Breland's like. I got this, right? I'm going to tell him what to do. He's the cut man since Mike Tyson in Tokyo. Remember when he fought Buster? He had a balloon. He put the balloon on it. He blew up a balloon. He put the balloon on it. I was like, what? They blew, up, they blew up a latex glove. <laughs> they probably thought oh, they would have needed it. Oh, <laughs> they were like, we're not going to need one. We're about to go ahead quick work. Exactly. And then it was no out like, oh, shit. They weren't prepared for that. Didn't know what to do. But no, that's, that's just... <laughs> no, nah, that's it. That's it for me. That's my that's my take on it. That I that worries me. And I think honestly, I gotta really worry about where Wilder's head is at. I, I think Wilder needs, if not a new trainer, he needs a mentor and coach, a former heavyweight champion, somebody who can show him a few things like, yo, this is what he was doing. Oh, Just man. a few things. Wilder could beat Fury with the right training. Wilder's got talent. You need the right, you need somebody to steer the ship, though. You need somebody. If JD's is steering that ship. You're going straight to an iceberg. That's it. It's Titanic <laughs> part two. We don't want that. We need somebody who's going to get you. Part two. you know we, we want somebody who's going to get you to the right path and show you the right ways. So that, that's it for me. I, I mean, I'm hoping. I, 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 I mean, the story with Breland, I don't know, whatever. That's whatever. But really, JDs can't be the head trainer. That's my take. Yo, Complex, I agree with you 1,000. I think we all agree with no to JD. Exactly. <laughs> Hold on a second. No, sir, I can't even. No, I'm about to say, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. You know what? You know what? You know what's so funny, man? Like, this may be the first Wilder segment where we don't have a disagreement. That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But um, I will say this. Parting ways with Brillin, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. Because Brillin's been with him for 12 years, and Wilder – has shown regression. And I think Brillin reached his max with uh, Deontay Wilder when he won the title. When he fought Burmains to burn, Wilder was using the jab. Wilder was boxing. He was keeping his distance. And he showed promise. But what I think happened after Deontay Wilder won the title Jamie. was he started to hear, you're great. He started to hear all the things. And then he became too big for Mark Brillin to handle. See, when Wilder was on the come up, Mark Brillen can tell him things because, see, he was still learning. He still had to have faith. But once he became the guy who had the green belt and he became the guy who can knock everyone out, it's hard to talk to Wilder. Once Wilder became the king of Wakanda. Exactly. And so he's just like, JD's is like, listen, you want to set him up. And Wilder's like, why well, do I need to do anything? As soon as I touch him with the right hand, he's going to fall. And what Mark Brillen knows is everyone's not going to fall. Every night's not going to be your night. And you're going to have to have adjustments and you're going to have to have a plan B and you're going to have to have a plan C sometimes. And Wilder just always felt like when I hit someone with the right hand, they're going to fall. And he felt that way about Tyson Fury because he did drop Fury with the right hand twice. And, you know, everyone, including myself, when he dropped Fury in the 12th round, I thought, man, it's over. But Tyson Fury's different. He got up. And he went back for some more. So, you know, you got to give Tyson Fury his credit. But I think Brillin has reached a point where his voice isn't going to do anything for Deontay Wilder because Wilder has already been successful defying um, Brillin and not listening to Brillin and just doing what he wants to do. So I think you need to bring in someone that he's going to respect and someone he's going to listen to. Complex brought up Jonathan Banks. I think that's a good pick. But will he respect Jonathan Banks enough to even listen to him? I think when it comes to Wilder, um, you have to be someone with status. You have to be someone who can come in 
and you have a resume of your own that uh, Deontay Wilder is going to listen to. Now, who are the trainers like that that would be willing to train uh, Deontay Wilder? You got some trail? Who, who are you thinking? I got one. I got one. Who? I got one. I got a good guy out there in California. You know what I'm saying? And he all, my man, my man, Freddie, out in California. <laughs> wild card. Freddie Roach? I can see Freddie. I can see Freddie making wild Freddie going to get him knocked out. <laughs> You know, Freddie's fight is getting knocked history up. History of uh, training heavyweights. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Wilder's skill set is uh, the type of skill set that Freddie's accustomed to working with. Although you gotta give Freddie his props. Freddie is an elite trainer. And he has the respect. He'll at least listen to Freddie. Exactly. And when you lose, Freddie got a thing with fixing fighters after they lose. If you look at all the fighters that went to Freddie after they lose, they uh rejuvenated their career. You know what I'm saying? Like fighters like Miguel Cotto and others, like Pacquiao also. Once you get with a guy like Freddie Roach, he has this ability um, after a loss to change you into a more devastating and complete fighter. So I just got to give it up for Freddie Roach. I think he, he does, but I feel like Freddie's, um, his style is more like your best defense is a good yeah. offense. offense. That's it. I was about to say, Freddie's, Freddie was going to get your offense to 1,000. Yeah. But your defense, <laughs> not there. That's the thing. So you And Wilder, the thing is this, for me, Wilder, it's not his, his offense isn't the problem. It's his defense. Wilder, Wilder needs somebody who can make him more complete and balance him. Wilder, if you give him more offense, he's going to go out there, but like, how can he stop? Fury from coming. That's the thing. I was saying moving forward, using that jab instead of always going backwards. And maybe he can do some move around more. Do some. No, I agree. Back. But what I what I feel like is I don't think you're going to turn Wilder into a defensive wizard. Yeah, so I, I don't think that's the way to go either. What, yeah. When I look at trainers, I look at a trainer who's known for – I want a trainer who's known for giving their fighter a solid jab. Solid double, solid triple, and who teaches their fighter to come in behind the jab with a powerful right hand. And the trainer, I think, who can do that for Deontay Wilder is Rodney Shields. Look at all Rodney Shields fighters. They have phenomenal jabs, and they throw mean one-twos. Everyone who trains with Rodney Shields, that's what he needs. He needs a jab. He needs that jab we saw um, Jamal Charlo. Yeah. Beat Sergey Derevianchenko with. Once he has the jab to match the right hand, he'll be dangerous. And then he can stop mixing in hooks at times. But for him, no one worries about his jab. Everyone's like, whatever with his jab. It's the right hand. Ron, Ronnie Shields? Yeah. They're only worried about his right hand. They're not, they never yeah. worry about his jab. I think Ronnie Shields, every time you see a fighter with Ronnie Shields, they have a beautiful jab. Rodney Shields was training F.A. It's actually Rodney Shields who was training F.A. Jagva before. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> I'm saying, hold on, bro. Hey, I'm look, I, I was like, I was trying to remember. You, like, you, you going to compare Deontay Wilder to F.A.? Come on now. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, we, FA, just, we just talked about F.A., G brought up F.A. because training with, uh, what's his face, uh, Joe Goose, and I was like, wait, yeah, who was training with somebody else before? Hey, yo, just because you pour syrup on stuff don't make it pancakes, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can pour all the syrup you want on F.A. Dapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, how you going to sit there and blame Ronnie? You said Ronnie Shields was training F.A., right? He how was. Come he's walked not out training the gym. Ronnie walked out the gym. How come he's Ronnie, not training him anymore? <laughs> Ronnie Actually, said, says, look. Ronnie says here, like, he's like, I left. He's like, I left him. He's like, oh, I, I, I left him. Hey, you I, I wonder put, why. I wonder why. You can put on all the makeup you want. It's not going to make you a supermodel. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is. Like, yo, hey, Ronnie Shields was like, yo, there's only so much I can do. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I can't work miracles. But I think with Deontay Wilder, you can F.A. a job is slow. F.A. a job is like the equivalent of Joe, Joe Joyce. Joyce. In fact, Joe Joyce might be faster than him. You know what? I would love to see them put them in the ring and see who can land the punch first. But um battle of the slow motion, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, but I, I think um Ronnie Shields would possibly only because I think Wilder has a certain skill set that needs to be fine-tuned. I don't think you can like build them up or ever teach him to be no, a great agreed. boxer. Agreed. Especially when you factor in that he's 35 already. So um there's that. Now we got JDs. 
And everybody knows nothing good comes with these. Nothing. <laughs> nothing good comes with these. Okay? My in fact, good. in you know, fact, I got, when I was in middle I got school, two kids because of my <laughs> of these. <laughs> <laughs> these has done nothing good. Bro. No, but but for real. And 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 the thing that used to bother me when I was in middle school, there was this K Verdian kid, right? And he used to say, "They've been calling for you," and I'll be like, "Who?" And he'd be like, "These," and I'd be like, "That's not the setup. That's a that's, 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 that's not the setup." Yeah. And it's like, "Yo, you know, you say you know, you know D, right? Oh, uh, like oh, D who? These, <laughs> right? That's exactly what JD is. Okay, like if you want to go into battle with JDs as your head trainer." You're yeah. asking to lose. <laughs> You're asking to lose. So does Jaden train anyone else? Huh? Does he even train anyone else? No. no. Never. No. Okay. He's not well, a trainer. Maybe Marcellus Wilder? <laughs> he trained Marcellus Wilder? <laughs> <laughs> he get like two knockouts and he got caught cheating. You know what I'm saying? No, got he don't do boxing. Mm-hmm. This ain't what he do. He, he's like a... Uh, uh, he's he owned the gym. That's it. He, he, he simply owned the, own the gym that Deontay Wilder walked into. He's a yoga instructor. That's what I'm saying. He just owned the gym that Deontay Wilder walked into. No, but but being 100% real, if JD's is going to be the head trainer for the fight against Tyson Fury, like God, I don't even want to see that from Wilder. Like I as much I give Wilder slack because he doesn't have like the skill set. I'm a boxing purist. I like my fighters to actually care and love the sport. Wilder doing this is not going to show me that he cares and he loves the sport. But boxing is better with Wilder in it. I don't want to see Wilder get beat so bad he never fights again. I, if Wilder loses the Fury, which I anticipate, I want to see him fight other people who he can possibly beat who we're not going to be like, yo, it's a cakewalk. You know, it'll be great to see him fight other fighters. So why not use this as an opportunity to either get your belts back or improve your skills? So for me, I don't want to see Wilder go in there with JD. So they said JD's is the head trainer for now. Let's hope until somebody else <laughs> comes in. Otherwise, Wilder, I'm telling you what you did. You fired Mark Brennan because you knew he would be one that throws in the towel for you. That's why you fired him. So your plan is to get beat up all night and just hope to land the right. And you know that JD's won't throw in the towel for you because he cares more about his bag than he does about your health. Right? Please, listen. As much as I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you right now. I think Fury's going to beat the crap out of you. I do. I don't think there's anything you can do to stop Fury from beating you. But there is something you can do to stop him from ending your career on that night. And that's hire someone qualified for the job. Hell, you can land a punch. You got a punch a chance. But I don't think the guy you're fighting is going to quit from one good punch. That's the trouble you're in. Everyone else quits from one good punch. You're going to have to land a few good punches on this guy. You need someone who can teach you how to do that. You were able to land two good punches on him in the first fight. You didn't knock him out. You landed a few good punches on him in the second fight. You couldn't even drop him. You're going to need to land a few good punches punches to make a difference in this fight and JD's is not the guy to teach you how to do it that's my advice for you Deontay you don't have to listen to me I know I'm the number one Deontay hater uh, according to everyone for telling the truth but Wilder JD's is not it these <laughs> not it <laughs> Let us know how you let us know how you feel about this craziness and please check us out on Instagram and Twitter. That's G. That's our boxing cousin, the complex gentleman. That's Caden. Don't forget to check out our podcast on all streaming services. I'm Trill Dollar Bell. What are you gonna do now, Deontay Wilder? It's the MFBB. Catch me creeping down the dark street. This is where it means the zombies meet. Guarantee we all gonna eat. A zombie ray again with HD. I'm a zombie in the night, you better run from me. Zombie ray in the house, you better run, homie. Brought a mask and some gloves with some thugs with me. I came to do damage, you wanna purge with me. Super Saiyan zombie, I'll be.